Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Isa. I'm a second grade teacher in the state of Tennessee. Today's video, I'm gonna focus on strategies of addition with regrouping. Correlating to the curriculum that I'm using, we my school currently uses the iReady curriculum. So these strategies you'll see within lesson six, working with numbers within 100. And you'll still see this within um, the unit two of that same curriculum in iReady. But regardless, you should still see these strategies across all curriculums. So this should be helpful even if you do not have the iReady curriculum at your school. So starting off with this first strategy, I'm gonna look at an open number line. And if you notice, my equation starts with 56. So that means my number line needs to start with 56. I need to move up to the nearest 10, which in this case would be 60. 56 plus four gets me to 60. Since I'm at a number that ends in zero, I'm gonna focus on my tens place on that 15. And I see that I have one 10. So on my next jump, I'm going to move one 10, which is 10. So I know 60 plus 10 gets me to 70. Now I'm gonna look back at my bond and I still have a number missing. I know that this bond is the same as saying five minus four. So the missing number would be one. So I can say 70 plus one equals 71. If you pay attention, these middle numbers will add to make 15. So four plus 10 plus one equals 15. And if you look, those same numbers are on the top of my number line, four, 10, and one. So that second number is normally what I choose to jump. That first one I start with. We're gonna look at another example. Starting with the same exact problem, now I'm gonna look at expanded form. And if you notice, 56 broke up into 50 plus six. So now I need to break up 15 because that's the other number in the equation. So I'm gonna break it up by tens and I'm gonna break it up by ones when I'm doing expanded form. So looking at the tens place, I have one 10, which equals 10. Then looking at the ones place, I only have one five. I'm gonna add straight down. So 50 plus 10 is 60, six plus five is 11. Now I can add these across 60 plus 11. If this is difficult for you, you can draw your base 10 blocks. I know that this 10 technically can come over. I don't technically need to regroup. I could just count all my 10s out, but I like bringing that 10 over that way I can make sure I count all my tens together. And after I count all those tens together, I should have seven tens and one ones, 71. Our next strategy is going to be with base 10 blocks. Normally I call this a T-chart, um, but the manipulatives are called base 10 blocks. 
So when I add, it's kind of like when I'm cooking something like soup in a crock pot where you kind of just throw everything in and just hope for the best. Here, we're going to throw everything in. And what I mean by that, we're going to need to throw everything in, 56 and 15, all in there. So first, I'm going to put in 56. So I have five tens and six ones. So I just put in 56. Now, I'm going to change my pen color so you can see 15. It's 15. Now I need to ask myself, can I make a 10? And I'm going to look at my one place first to decide if that's possible. So I'm going to count out my ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to take all of the ones that I just counted that made 10. I'm going to regroup those into the tens place. So I didn't take them away. I regrouped them. Taking away means that they're gone forever. Regrouping means we're just moving them into the next place value. So once I count all of those, I know that I had 5 on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the new one makes seven. So I have seven tens and one ones. Looking at a different problem, I like to start with my first number in the equation, which in this case would be 48. I need to jump up to the nearest 10, which means this number is going to end in zero. So counting from 48, I need to think about what the next number would be that would end in 0. So 48, 49, 50. I know 50 ends in 0. But then I need to ask myself, how much of a jump is that? And I know that that's a jump of 2. Now that I'm at a number that ends in zero, I want to focus on my tens place in that second number of 43. And I see that I have four tens there. So I need to jump 40. I know that 50 plus 40 is 90 because 5 plus 4 is 9 and then a 0 plus 0 after that. So I know that's 90, but I still need to figure out this bond. When we go from top to bottom, we subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, which means from 90, I need to jump one more to get to 91. So 48 plus 43 is 91. Looking at the expanded form of 48 plus 43, I'm going to look at 48. 48 has four tens, which means it has 40, eight ones. Then looking at 43, four tens, which means it's 40, three ones. Then I'm going to add straight down 40 plus 40 is 80, eight plus three is 11 using base 10 blocks I can have eight tens and then one ten and one ones over there so looking at the tens I have one ten over here and eight over here it means I have nine tens and then if you look this is the only one so I have 91. Looking at base 10 blocks, we're going to throw everything in. So I'm going to focus first on the first number, 48. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 tens, 8 ones. Then I'm going to look at my next number, 43, 4 tens, 3 ones. Okay, I threw everything in. 
Now I need to start in my ones place and I need to ask myself, can I make 10? So I'm gonna count these out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I can. I'm gonna take the ten and regroup them into the tens. I have one ten now. That just regroups into tens place. So when I add that, I have four on top, four red on the bottom, plus the one yellow. So I have four plus four plus one there. I have nine. And then if you look over here, I have one left over in the ones. So I have 91. This would be a good place to pause the video. If you'd like to try a problem by yourself without any help, I would pause the video, see what you can do to try to solve this. The first strategy is an open number line. All right, so when I solve an open number line, I need to start with the first number, which is 23, which means if I'm trying to make equations to help guide me, I wanna start with 23. And we're adding, so that's why I'm doing an addition sign. So I need to move up to the nearest 10, which is a number that ends in zero. So I need to ask myself what number ends in zero if I'm counting up. So 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 ends in zero. But how many do I need to jump to get to 30 if I'm counting by ones? And I know if I jump up seven, I'm at 30. From 30, now that I end in a zero, I need to jump the tens, which is three tens. And I know that makes 30. From there, we know that 30 plus 30 equals 60. So that's gonna be our second equation. If we look at this number bond, seven minus seven equals zero. Technically, I don't need to jump zero because I'm going to land myself back at 60. So I'm not gonna jump zero because I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I were to jump zero, I would still be at 60. So I don't need to show that last jump. So I would just stop here. All right, looking at expanded form, we're gonna break it apart. Let's look at 23 first. I have two tens for 20, three ones. Okay, now I need to look at 37. I have three tens for 30. I'm gonna fix that, a little messy. And seven ones. Gonna add straight down, 50, 10. If I show this in base 10 blocks, I have five tens on the left and one 10 on the right. I don't have any ones, so five tens plus one 10 makes six tens, which is 60. Looking at the last and final strategy of base 10 blocks, we're gonna throw everything in, just like we've been doing. Let's look at 23 first. We're gonna put two tens and three ones. Now I'm going to look at the second one. And now put 37 in. Now I need to see if I can make 10. Looking into the ones place first. I'm going to count 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. All of this made a 10 that I need to regroup over. So I have zero ones. And if I look in my tens, I have six tens. So I should have 60. For this last problem, 
I am going to show you how to do the standard algorithm and how it correlates to what we've been doing. So if I wanted to solve this the standard way, I can see that I actually put three right here. I put seven down here, just like I did in my base 10 frame. When we solved three plus seven, we knew that that made 10 that we needed to regroup. So when I regroup that, I brought a 10 over, as you can see with the arrow going into the tens. So that's what's happening in my standard algorithm when I regroup over. Then when I solve straight down, one plus two plus three, we were left off with six. So if you notice, the standard algorithm is it's very similar to the base 10 blocks. The base 10 blocks is just a physical way of seeing how the standard algorithm is working in action. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Please give this video a like if you'd like to see more content like this. And I hope to see you next time when I'm looking at subtraction with regrouping.